Hello, everyone, and welcome. Welcome to uh, Moodle MOOC 2 on WizIQ. My name is Nellie Deutsch. And uh, if you could write where you're from, I've added some things to the chat box, as you can see. Um, first of all, the presentation, so that you get a chance to click on the links later on, because the uh, PowerPoint that is on the uh, whiteboard is not clickable. Okay, so you'll need the PowerPoint. And also uh, the course where you can get the content, all the content, and uh, the link so that you can view the recording, which is the same link, and a code so that you can get your badge from Connected Educators Month for, two th for October 2013. So, if you feel like uh, asking questions, adding comments, and so on, use the chat box. It's for you to chat along as we go. Nobody's going to hear you, and you're not going to disturb. All right, so uh, let's get started. I see that our presenters are here. Hello, Nan and Helene. A little bit about the presenters before we start. First of all, um, You've got Helene on the right and Nan on the left. And uh, the session is called Flipping an Online Teacher Education Course. Helene is the director of TESOL, Teaching English to Speakers of Other Languages, Bilingual Education. I'm not sure what L-O-T-E means, so you'll have to help me with that. She's Associate Professor of Education at L-I-U Hudson. I believe it's in Long Island. And Nan Fredland is in her final semester of a master's degree in TESOL at L-I-U, and she is focused on working with adult and college ESL students. She's also a graduate student. What I wanted to say that uh, uh, all this information I got from Helene, who's very, very modest. You can read a little bit about Nan's work, and maybe uh, Helene will share. Uh, she's teaching academic writing at Corcordia College in Bronxville. And uh, when she's not teaching, she's heading out to Granada to study Spanish or Guatemala to participate in a grassroots movement to empower women towards social and political action. And this is where the transpersonal learning focus comes in for the Moodle MOOC, for Moodle MOOC 2. Uh, Helene uh, Marshall also wrote two books that I'm really, really uh, pleased about, and I think that you're going to enjoy them, so they're highly recommended. One came out in 2011 called Breaking New Ground. It's about teaching and it's got lots of practical ideas. And the second one just came out in June of, I think it's June of 2013. And it's called Making the Transition to Classroom Success, Culture Responsive Teaching for Struggling Language Learners. All right, so uh, we're going to go to the PowerPoint and flipping. And I'm sure everybody wants to learn as much as they can about flipping education courses. Okay, so um, Helene, I'm going to pass on the mic to you first, as well as the writing too, so you can pass, move the slides, or I can move them for you. And then I'm also going to pass on the mic to Nan. And I believe you're at the college right now, is that correct? If you could write where you are at the moment, it's always exciting to learn where people are. Are they in their studies, on the beach, in the car, um, in the kitchen? Where are you? Can you see me? I'm we can hear you, Helene, and good to hear you. Can you hear me? Oh, yes, very well. 
Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. All right. Great. All right. So uh, this is my office. All right. I'm in my office at Long Island University. And you can see I have a little window. I don't know what you can see, but I have a little window there. <laughs> I can see out my little window. And there's Nan. She's presenting with me. She's behind me there. There she is. And then we come back. Okay. So it's a small office. And I'm at work, and Nan is here with me. So should I pass on the mic to her? I'm not sure. You look great. I miss you. <laughs> oh, same here. It's been a while. <laughs> yeah, almost okay. a year. So I'm excited because uh, this is my first presentation on my brand new Mac. Oh, for Mac. yay. <laughs> yeah. I've been a PC person for years, and I just, I just got a Mac. So. Enjoy. Yeah, raise your hand if you're a Mac. Okay. Thumbs up so, um, so, for the Macs. Um, okay. Now, while okay. we're raising now, our hands, while we're raising our hands, I getting an echo. Yeah, I think it. You need a headset, um, Helene. I think you're not wearing one. Are you? You are wearing one. Okay, so I'll just, I'll move out and let you ladies go ahead. It may be because Nan was right next to me. Yeah, that's what I was saying, yeah. So you know what, just mute your mics when, when you're not speaking. Do you know how to do that? Well, she left the room. Oh, okay. Yeah, maybe another room would, would work. <laughs> Yeah, isn't that funny? Okay. Can can you see me? And I'm in there. Can you hear me? I only see you once. Can you hear me? Yes. Do you hear me? Um, okay. So while we're right. All hand, right. So uh, this is my office. Your hand or put a All right. Up, I'm in my office at Long Island University. And you can see I have a little window. I don't know what you can see, but I have a little window there. I can see out my little window. And there's Nan. She's presenting with me. She's behind me there. There she is. Okay, so and then we come back. Okay. Time, so it's a small office, but I'm at work and Nan is here with me. Thumb up. So that means it's new for some of you. And then for those of you who've heard of it, is there anyone who's actually tried it? Let us know if you've tried it. Oh, same here. It's been a while. <laughs> okay. So I'm excited because uh, this is my first presentation on my brand new Mac. Let's hear it for Mac. <laughs> I've been a PC person for years, and I just I just got a Mac, so I know Nellie's a Mac person too. Okay, so so um so um so um so let me tell you a little bit quickly um, of how I got involved in uh, flipped learning. Uh, the way I got involved is okay. Now while okay. we're raising now, our hands, while we're raising just, our hands, I just. Long Island University. We go I'm getting an echo. I'm getting an echo. At the end of the conference, we have some folks get up and tell us about what the latest is, the latest in technology. I have it. Somebody I a am. couple of years ago mentioned uh, flipped learning, and it sounded I think it was, to me. I think it was. And I was, uh, at the time, uh, I, working on redesigning my linguistics course. I had been problematic. It may be because Nan was right next to me. And uh, I decided, well, let me look into the flip. And when I did my research on it, I found that it was mostly in K through 12 math and science and stream U.S. classes. That's where it started. The epicenter of it. Well, she left the room. With a couple of guys, uh, John Bergman and Aaron Sam, the whole thing started. And they're the ones who um, wrote the book. Hey, how's it going? Um, and I thought, wow, maybe this has nothing to do with me. But then I started at, uh, it was being okay. applied at so, the uh, level. So I'm in there twice, I guess. Is at Harvard, and he was calling it something else. He was calling it peer instruction. 
So just oh, okay. like any other movement, it can have... Okay, so, um, so while we're raising our hands, you all to uh, raise your hand or put a thumbs up, whatever the convention is in WizIQ, if you've ever heard about the flipped classroom. Who's heard about the flipped classroom? Give us some sign if you've heard about the flip before. Okay, so some of you, this is your first time. I can see that there are a number of people in the room and only a few are your thumb up. So that means it's new for some of you. And then for those of you who've heard of it, is there anyone who's actually tried it? Let us know if you've tried it. Who's tried it? Put it in the chat you. if you've actually tried doing this. There, I can because do it. we might call upon it's you just later. Just a little arrow on the top right, but I can do it. Oh, it looks like uh, uh, Nelly gave us a poll. That's great. Oh, they are. Okay. So, uh, so let me tell you a little bit quickly um, of how I got involved in uh, flipped learning. Uh, the way I got involved is about two years ago, I was at a conference uh, sponsored by LIU, Long Island University. We go every year on a retreat. And uh, at the very end of the conference, we have some folks get up and tell us about what the latest is, the latest in technology. And somebody a couple of years ago mentioned uh, flipped learning, and it sounded very interesting to me. And I was, uh, at the time, uh, working on redesigning my linguistics course, which had been problematic for a variety of reasons. And uh, I decided, well, let me look into the flip. And when I did my research on it, I found that it was mostly in K through 12 math and science mainstream US classes. That's where it started. The epicenter of it was in Colorado with a couple of guys, uh, John Bergman and Aaron Sam. The whole thing started. And they're the ones who um, wrote the book, uh, the first book, uh, Flip Learning, which I'll show you a little bit about at, towards the end. Um, and I thought, wow, maybe this has nothing to do with me. But then I started at, uh, it was being applied at the college level by Eric Mazur at Harvard. And so he was calling it something else. He was calling it peer instruction. So just like any other movement, it can have pockets where it's used with different terminology by different people. Uh, so it seems as though the most common way to refer to it is right now is, is flip learning. But it may be something that you're familiar with and don't know it because you're using a different term or you're encountering it in a different setting. So, um, so let's start by taking a look at just the basic definition. Now there are a lot of ways that flip learning uh, is implemented. But generally speaking, uh, who's advancing slides? Uh, am, I, am I advancing slides? I'm ready for the next slide. Do I do that? I'm happy to. I just don't seem to have uh, on the uh, I'd be happy to do it. I see m I see some arrows over to the left, but they're grayed out for me. In any case, um, I uh, so I'm not sure about that. Online, okay. All right. Uh, so in any case, the the, the main principle learning. of uh, flipped learning is turning turning teaching on its head, so that direct instruction takes place outside of class. So that the actual presentation or delivery of information by the instructor takes place outside of class. The students access and practice and applic homework exercises, anything you might assign to do at home, is brought into the classroom and done in class. And one way to think of this is uh, Bloom's taxonomy, if you're familiar with Bloom. And the idea is that the lower levels are the levels of understanding information and remembering it. And we usually spend a lot of time with students on these lower levels, and we hope that we can maybe get to the upper levels where they apply, analyze, and create knowledge. But we don't seem to have time to do that because we spend so much time, especially with English language learners, on the understanding and remembering. So this farms that out of the classroom so that the understanding and remembering takes place place side takes place elsewhere and our entire class can focus on the upper levels of bloom so that's another really positive aspect of this approach 
videos. So on, on the next slide, you're going to see a model of flipped learning. And now we're getting into um, the way I envision flipped learning. Uh, in the beginning, I wanted to just give you the basic principle that everybody espouses. Okay, so this is, that was generic. Now we're going to take a look at what I've been doing in my class. Uh, I originally tried learning in a face-to-face -face classroom. Face-to-face -face classroom, flipped learning, basis of the instructor having lectures recorded that the students watch at home, and then the exercises and activities for the class and collaborative kinds of things happen in the actual classroom on campus, bricks and mortar. And I did that for a couple of years. But this year, I decided to try something different. I've been teaching online now for a number of years. I'm hearing some extra noises of some kind. I'm not sure what those are, but in any case, uh, I hope everyone isn't hearing them. In any case, um, I do is I teach online, and I realized that I have my innovation over here, my flipped learning my face-to-face -face flipped learning. And over here, I teach online, but I do it in a very traditional way. I bring my students into a virtual classroom, and I have a PowerPoint, and I present, like I'm presenting to you right now. We're interacting a little bit now and then in the chat, but that's about it. Um, it's a presentation. I would teach them, and then I would assign things to them that they would submit to me, upload them to our online platform. And it was a very traditional class. The only thing different was that it was online. But they were still submitting assignments, dead end, just to me, to the professor, and I would return them graded. And they'd come to the virtual classroom, and I'd lecture. So it didn't make much sense. Me flip it. So this semester, for the first time, I'm flipping the online version of teaching, which is very exciting to me, because I'm wedding the concept of online teaching with flipped learning. So this is what the model looks like. The, we're going to go very quickly through these four, and then as Nan and I give this presentation, we'll be telling you in much more detail what it actually looks and feels like. So uh, the first part of the model, are that would be the instructional videos and the textbook, because I do assign a textbook. So the teacher, the instructor, prepares those videos and assigns the textbook. They don't have to be videos that you've created, although they should be and can be where possible. We'll get more into that later. Then there's uh, the virtual classroom. They come just as they would to campus, but they come into an online doing right now, the same type of a place where you can have a chat and a webcam and, and interact. Uh, and they collaborate. We'll see more about what that looks like. Then there's that's the synchronous part. Then there's the asynchronous part, where students go off on their own to their fieldwork sites because these are for teachers. They're learning to be teachers, or they are teachers, and they have field hours. And then there are online discussions, which that's probably the most traditional part of my teaching, which is uh, the, the online discussions that most people have in online courses. And then the fourth component that should say observation, feedback, and assessment. There are really three components there. So there's observation, feedback, and assessment. And um, the observation is a little easier in a face-to-face. -face. Maybe that's why I uh, amended this particular element. But I have found that I can still observe them by going into these online breakout rooms and by reading the chat. I can still observe them, and I definitely give them feedback along the way uh, during class and certainly in the um, online discussions and in other ways. That and there's an assessment component. Um, as in any class, I do um, assessment of the quality of the discussion, their participation, et cetera. And also, there are some um, actual tests that I give them. So this is the model. This is the cycle for the um, the, model, the um, online flip that I use. OK, so the ne on the next slide, you'll see the reasons why I think this model in particular and flipped learning in general are uh, so beneficial for our learners. And there are three reasons. And sometimes I give presentations, and the title of the presentation is Three Reasons to Flip Your Classroom. <laughs> So these are the big three. I think number one, and I'd like you to think th during the whole rest of this uh, 
session, I'd like you to keep thinking about these three and say, are we doing this? Are we doing this? So the first one is increasing comprehension. I think that with flipped learning, more students learn more. More students understand more than in a normal class. You're never going to have 100% comprehension, 100% students. But I notice that more of my students understand more because of the way that I have set up the class. Uh, the second is interaction is greater. So that I'm doing less, I'm out of it more, and the students are doing more. Somebody has to be doing something. So if the instructor's doing less, the students are doing more. So it becomes very learner-centered, and there's a tremendous amount of interaction. And then the third is critical thinking, and that addresses the fact that we are able to operate on the upper levels of Bloom much more, again, because we have to operate on some level. If we're doing less of the lower levels we're in class, we're doing more of the upper levels. And uh, I don't know what field you're all in. Uh, usually a lot of people who come to um, Dr. Nelly's uh, sessions are in S or EFL. And so if you are working with uh, English language learners, think about the implications of that for comprehension, interaction, and critical thinking. Because certainly, uh, English language learners stand to benefit very much so from these three uh, benefits. And so uh, with that as our basis, as our introduction, I'm going to turn it over to Nan, who's going to frame this for you uh, in terms of pedagogy. So how does this apply to adult education and adult ESL instruction? If you've been participating in Dr. Nelly's Moodle MOOC, you've noted that the recurring theme is transpersonal learning. We continue that theme by referencing Auerbach and Freire, whose work ha is focused on the needs of learners and meaningful social interaction. Keeping in mind this framework, we've created what I perfect blend of those ideas and flipped learning. First, um, from Auerbach and Freire, we have some basic principles of pedagogy and curriculum that are probably very familiar to you. For instance, um, lessons should be learner-driven and embrace their funds of knowledge. Lessons should meet immediate learner needs in ways that lead them to meaningful social action or personal goals. And from the flipped learning, we add possibilities to enhance learning and instruction. We leverage the power of technology. We enable mastery learning so that each student can reach their individual potential. We maximize the time in class devoted to interaction. And we shift the role of instructor from leader up front to what we call leading from behind. On the next slide, we should see three main focuses of leading from behind. I don't know if your slides are loading as slowly as mine, but I am just seeing now what we've what I've just iterated, the differences between Auerbach and Freire and flipped learning, and how we have combined them. So in leading from behind, the instructor is not at the head of the classroom most of the time. She's what I call leading from behind. I believe that this is a role that more teachers would undertake if they knew that leading from behind didn't mean giving up their their role, their loss of control, or, the, or giving up their sense of importance, um, I think many more teachers would be willing to try flipped learning. For instance, to the teacher all of the time for my instruction, I get to notice that she's observing what we're doing. Her attention is on us as we interact. Um, we can be in groups, or we can be in the virtual classroom, we can be in online chats that are um, just one chat, like you see on your screen here, or we can engage in private chats. No matter where we are, she can be observing us. Then she's able to give us feedback um, in the virtual classroom. She's also able to give us feedback later on. 
on in our Blackboard. Finally, she can be assessing us while we're talking to each other or writing on the whiteboard um, in breakout groups or together as a class. It's not face-to-face. -face. I say it's more like FaceTime. And in many ways, I think it's better. The teacher is able to observe, give feedback, and assess. But also, we are able to do the same thing. We get to observe each other in a way that we can't observe in a traditional classroom, because usually it's the instructor and one student having a conversation. We, there's only one or two people who can be having a dialogue at a time. When we're online, we can have multiple conversations going at the same time. For example, a student who has a question can write about it in the chat, and another student can answer that question. So we get to have the opportunities to observe each other, give each other feedback, and also to self-assess. In the traditional classroom, since only one student instructor at one time, this, this platform is a more dynamic context, and students are able to ask each other uh, questions and participate at a level that we don't get to participate in the traditional classroom. And now I'd like to turn this over to Dr. M, who will take you step up to show you how this is done. Okay. So um, thank you, Nan. I, you know, it's always amazing to me how powerful it can be to do a presentation uh, with someone who can present the learner perspective. Because no matter how much I think I'm getting what's happening from the other direction, it's, it's never quite as vivid as when you can hear from someone who's experiencing it. So, uh, so that, was, that was very, really very in, insightful, I think, for all of us to hear that. Uh, so now let's go through the nuts and bolts, which is very often something that people ask about. They say, well, now this sounds wonderful. So how does this happen? What does it look like? What do I do? So this is the part where if we've, I, I just realized perhaps I need to look at the chat and I haven't done that. Uh, so um, if I did miss something important in the chat, I will now try to monitor that. In fact, that's exactly what my students told me last week in class. They were trying to get my attention while I was uh, trying to organize something about my computer and fix the breakouts or something. And they kept saying, watch the chat. You're not looking at the chat. <laughs> so that's something I need to work on. Uh, so I'm going to uh, try to see the chat. By the way, I now see those wonderful arrows. I just didn't see them before because there was some other uh, view of my webcam blocking them. All right, so now we start with the videos. So the first tent and the slides. It does take time to answer your question about how long does it take. Yeah, yeah, it takes time. My first linguistics lecture took me eight hours to create, but my final one took only one hour. So it depends on how you know, how much you do it, you practice, and you get better. Um, and you want it to be good, you know. But it's better. Better if you do it yourself, because, but are they yeah, just matching where Mac, you were learners? And the Mac is probably, um, uh, the I'm second sure thing I do is I right, add support. You're going to uh, see Java. this in a minute. I add guide questions, Since webcam, a, as you see, I talk Mac. with my hands a little better, I smile or something. So, can you put the so link and I can share uh, it's not bad to have talk. that, to punch it up a bit and to provide support. Then the students will watch the video um, as, um, tell uh, me where to go and you know, um, we could do it that Nan way because I don't think you've got the right job. You can pause, you can, can rewind, see. you can prepare questions for class. You own that video, it becomes yours. Uh, so just and uh, they can the link in the they chat. can always access yeah, it as it. I will okay, show you so in a minute at any time they can access it okay, just as people may be watching this so can, um, uh, presentation from a oh, link going. to you the recording it, of it instead of watching it live. Oh, you managed. Yeah, you're uh, so there. So that's what Great. my students can do. What? You're there. Then you did uh, it. they can also jot down 
uh, anything think, that they have questions about. Um, I'm not there on the spot, obviously. They're watching a video. But they can make notes uh, to I know, I ask thought, when they come to class. No, and no, we're also, not. We're not. I build in questions into no, the videos that I make um, that make them along the way about what I'm teaching them. So what I'd like to do now, but, and I didn't realize... I, yeah, okay, I'll is go these there now. weren't okay. clickable, but, you know, but I'm going to now really share strange. my screen and show you the studio. So let's visit the recording studio, and I'll show you how I make my recording. Uh, let's see now. Screen sharing. I don't know who's I'm screen sharing. I think I am. Screen share. Okay, so um, uh, I'm going to uh, go there, <laughs> if that's okay. Okay. Uh, uh, you see me in my studio. All right. Wow. That's weird. Uh, so who's okay. sharing, you or I? Um, I'm going to share my screen. In my studio, and below me the guide questions. Uh, not yet. Trying to share my screen okay. here. Um. Um, and I'm going to take you to my studio as soon as it allows I see me. an Adobe. Is that what you want me to uh, see? Uh, Adobe, Nellie, I need I, to go in as... I'm lobby. not sure if oh, I... Oh, okay. So what do I add here? Yes, but you probably, have... yes, but you probably need to log in. How do I log in? Okay, I... Because that's my login. Oh, I see. Yeah, well, um... I... You can, you can enter as a guest. Okay. As a guest. All right. Okay. Enter as a guest. I did. Okay. Uh, okay. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Yeah, I did. I'll do that. That's fine. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Um. All right. So I'll do that. Uh. So we're going into Adobe to Connect. Yes, you're going into my recording studio. Oh, Adobe Connect is your recording studio? Mm -hmm. but it looks like... What? Yes, yes. I don't I'll understand. Teach, I'm going to take you to my classroom in a minute. This is so... uh, okay, <laughs> listen, can I'm you explain? My PowerPoint. What am I supposed to look at? Are you all seeing my... Can you explain how Adobe Connect is your studio? Okay. All right. Yes, this is what I so know if you, to do, but I if you, oh, okay, they'll, uh, I'll tell you what they see it because I've sharing. got two it says um, screens studio. open. It does say yeah. recording so studio right sharing. I'm in the recording studio. Can you see me? Uh, this is a private meeting. Your request to enter has been sent to the presenter. Are you seeing it? No, it says this is a private meeting. Your request to enter has been sent to the presenter. Please wait for the response. Okay. Can everyone okay. see me? Uh, you should be able to see me in my right. studio. Hi. Are you, you live? Are you live or are you, uh, is this a recording? Is it a recording or what? Oh, okay. Well, do, do you all see me in my studio and below me the kind questions? All right. Prove it. Give me a thumbs up. All right. Can you? <laughs> okay. I miss you, Helene. All right, great. Hello. Uh, hello. It, let me explain. All right. May I just take you to the login screen? All right. Now, everybody, you can see yes, but you probably have in my webcam. Yes, but you probably need to log in. You will see the guide question. All right. Can I? Can you give me control? Because that's my login. Those are the or you can you can enter as a guest. Just enter as a guest. And then to the right, I have my Just click on enter as a guest. PowerPoint, which I click through as I present. Just so enter. I them you should the see me in there. While I make a video, what I do is record it. In Adobe, you click. You go All right. to meeting. If you look above my camera, up to the left. It's going to load. Is the word meeting. Yes, you're going into my recording my studio. Meeting, and it says record meeting. But it looks like it's. So then I can click on record meeting. 
and yes, you don't yes. Know what's coming up, what's coming and it's also where I teach. I'm going to take you to my classroom in a minute. This is so <laughs> interesting. Uh, this is just the studio, and then my next in my next uh, slide or two, I'm going to take you into class. I just record. If I have to get, if I'm thirsty, I get my drink. Too bad. Students would rather have me do that than cough. Yes, this is what I'm about to do, but I want to make sure they see me first. And then I build in questions. I'll show you a page where I ask them to reflect. Are you here? Do you see me? Are these points new to you? Do they relate to you your see own me? learning? Do, do you see me? Do you find you them should. salient? I expect them to be interacting with this material. Do they see me? To them. Delivery, but it's also reflection. And they do have these questions. So this no. is what I call the studio. <laughs> and when I finish recording, I click on stop recording. <laughs> And the recording. All right, I'm going to allow you. I'm allowing you, okay? And then I put the link. I'll show you where in a minute. This is a yeah. new way of doing this. Yes. So. No, I'm in the room. You're watching. No, I'm not recording. I'm showing you how I record. Any questions you have about the studio? All right. Can you? I think they made it full screen, so I can't even see the chat right now. But that's okay. It's at the bottom. You can see the chat. I think maybe the best thing is, let's Hello. All right. You'll be able to see Hello. the chat. Let me explain. All right. You'll this is where I do my recording. Yeah, exactly. Right? exactly. Now, everybody, you can see exactly. me exactly. in my webcam right here at the top. Look below me. You will see the guide questions. Who was John B. Carroll? What are his five points, et cetera? Those are the questions that will guide the students through the recording. And then to the right, I have my laboriously prepared PowerPoint, which I click through as I present. So I will talk to them about the five points while I make a video. What I do is read it. In Adobe, you click, you go up to meeting. If you look above my camera, up to the left there, left, there's the word meeting. And I click on meeting, and it says record meeting. Okay. So then I can share. click on record meeting, and you don't see what's coming up, what's popping up. There are a lot of things popping up, and I can actually uh, record. So right now I just started a recording, and I will record. I don't. I don't stop. I just record. If I have to get, if I'm thirsty, I get my drink. We see you. Too bad. The students would rather have me do that than cough. So I just keep doing this very informally. It's for my students. And then I build in questions. I'll show you a page where I ask them to reflect. Are these points new to you? Do they relate to your own learning? Do they relate to your own teaching? Do you find them salient? I expect them to be interacting with this material that I'm presenting to them. It's delivery, but it's also reflection. And they do have these questions. So this is what I call the studio. And when I'm finished recording, I click on stop recording. And the recording stops. And then I'm given a link. And then I put the link. I'll show you where in a minute. And the students can access the recording. So uh, if anyone has any questions, you can put them in the chat. And I'd be happy to answer any questions you have about the studio. Uh, I think they made it full screen, so I can't even see the chat right now, but that's okay. Uh, so, unless you have, I think maybe the best thing is, let's exit the studio, and then uh, let's look at the chat, or maybe I can pop out the chat. I can pop it out, yeah. So, uh, let me see if there are, yeah, I popped it out, so let me see if there are questions here. Okay, all right. So I use the word studio just for fun. I mean, it's not a studio. Okay. <laughs> it's, uh, it's Adobe Connect. Connect. It like, uh, <laughs> yes, LIU. The reason I use LIU, oh, the reason like I use Adobe work. Connect is that uh, LIU has purchased a license yeah, for it. right. For the um, entire university. Any professor can use it. So they have a contract. All right? So uh, thank you uh, for help. And we're going to do another two different shares. So let's now go... Okay to the next slide, back to the PowerPoint, and we'll go to the next slide. I don't know, but... Uh, and let's see says, how we can do that. I don't know, Here we says, go. Uh, 
All right, Listen, so that's how I create baby, videos. Um, now, the Nan next um, screen the next she's thing I'd like to talk about is in class interaction and collaboration. So then, after they watch the recording oh, and they read the textbook, I'm not sure if you see me anymore, but that's okay. Uh, after they can't do, do that, that they review, clarify, and expand weird. material in the video right. and in I the to also, textbook. Um, they come to class. They actually come to class. And I'm going to show you, oh, you in just a minute what my classroom looks like as opposed to the studio where I record. When they come to class, they share their ideas. They brainstorm on related topics. There's the chat. There's whiteboards. There's uh, microphones. And they participate actively in class. Uh, and then there are group activities so that they can apply what they've been learning by going into breakout rooms or even doing brainstorming in the main meeting room. So now I'm going to show you that. We're going to do another screen share. And this is what, but that's a screenshot of it. We're going to actually go in there. So I'm going to give the link to it so that again you can go in you're going to have uh, to go yes, in did, as a I'm oh, let me get out of here able I'm to be in here anymore get out of my studio uh, all right so you uh, you'll have to do the same thing uh, just go in as a guest and I'll let you in <laughs> okay so uh, here we go there we go and uh, you can go in there and I'll meet you over there I'll meet you over in class. Well, that would be a better idea. See you in a minute let's do over that. in the classroom. Let's all go in. I think that would be more exciting than screen sharing, in my opinion. If we all go in there. Can you hear me? It's the same. It'll be the same process. Oh, okay, because I thought I lost. I don't know where the class is. Um, yeah, I think. You're in the room. I see you. Good. No, it's okay. I just You're don't. In. I'm sure I am. I just don't see myself. Okay. All right. Great. Uh, wait a okay. second. I want to make sure. Wait a minute. Did I give All you the right? All right. I think name? that's more exciting for. Uh, so everybody, if you could just say come the word in. Literacy. I, I usually do this. Does it say uh, the word like literacy? I do it with Google Drive. I get everybody sure to go to Google right Drive, name. and then it's really exciting to see people outside the virtual right. class. Right. But my purpose here is is slightly different. What I want to know. What I'm trying to do is show. I'm not having them. She is using a map. Virtual classroom. That's not the point of this. The point of it is for me to show them what I do uh, with my students, the kinds of collaborative activities uh, that I do. So I have the whole thing set up like a museum, really, for them to come in I'm, and see it. Okay, because I'm in there. Um, yeah, okay. Um, so I don't know if you're. Do able oh, that's to the studio you? anyway. I'm sorry. Wait a second. No, but I see. But people are coming in. Maria Sol is in. I gave you the studio again um, for some reason. I was set up. Okay, more so for if I can't in my screen share anymore you? for some reason, I don't know. I think my system got tired you? of it. Well, then edu slash yep. literacy. Yeah, they're coming in. Let's Who's just Jeffrey? do that. Uh, is he um, one of the participants? Two thousand thirteen. I'm happy with you all. Okay. But the idea is I'm trying to show you. I set up the room just to show you. That, try that link instead. Did I just gave you a link? Um, and I also want to make sure we get to. Yes, try that link. That should be it. Really that should be it. That Try that new link. It should work just fine. I was giving you the studio again. I meant the classroom. I have two separate links, one for us and one for the studio. Okay. I only see four people. I don't know who Jeffrey is because he's not on the I mean, if one. everyone here wants to go in, you can all go in. Is I'll it let you in. Some strangers came in too. Okay, so. Um, well, I can't see the chat right now. So I can. I can. All right, so if everybody can just click on the uh, chat, there's a link there that. Uh, yes. Called Connect L. I well, you're in the room. I see you. Again. You're in here. I see you. It again. You're in. Here, I'll add it again for everybody to see. There it is. If you could just click on that. Andre says the launcher. Just click on it. It'll take you in there. You'll be able to go in. I see that um, a few are in there already.
Okay, I see this. Some people are having problems with it. Right, but my purpose. Okay, you'll be able to see this later on. Okay, so. Um, right, but my purpose here is, you... is slightly different. What I want to know, what I'm trying to do is show, I'm not having them experience a virtual classroom. That's not the point of this. The, the point of it is for me to show them what I do with my students, the kinds of collaborative activities that I do. So I have the whole thing set up like a museum, really. It's for them to come in and, and see it, not to do it. Does that make sense? Um, so I don't know if you're, are you able to share your screen so they can? One of them here is called Whiteboard 5. That would be great. Breakout room number two. And they had to um, look in their book at a scenario in the textbook. Okay. That's fine. Well, then everyone would have, in order, to, for, in order for this to be effective that way, everyone would have to come in. Participants would have to come in. Improved upon based on what they'd learned from my lecture and from the textbook. So this group decided to make a few. I mean, I'm happy to have you all come. In, but the idea is I'm trying to show you, I set up the room just to show you some of the activities that we do. And I also want to make sure we get to some of the things that I really want to cover here. I wanted to show you Blackboard, the way, what I, where I put everything in Blackboard. That's the last piece. All right, I only see four people so far. They come back to the main room and they give a report back to the whole class on what they did together. Well, that takes a lot of time. So you can imagine that we have that time now. Well, I can't see the chat right, right now, so I'm not I sure. I did my lecture. They've read the book. This is all collaborative time for the entire group. These kinds of activities that are time consuming but do involve critical, critical thinking and interaction, as we mentioned earlier. Um, the other thing I can do is uh, I showed them some videos. I have a little video pod here. I can show them uh, videos. I showed them a couple of videos of teachers that they could critique and talk about what they thought about uh, how they felt when they watched those lessons, how they would feel as that's another activity. And we did that one collaboratively um, over on this whiteboard to the right. I just moved it to call well, attention to it. Oh, by the way, they yeah. have to sign in. I always have them. What I want to show you is that um, here's what it looks like. I have the attendees here, so I know who's in class. I give them a chat, which is below the attendee pod. I have an agenda, so they can see the agenda. I have the video, so that this for myself, I use it for my students. But what I wanted to draw your attention to is the collaborative nature. So here, for example, um, you can see a whiteboard. There, there are several whiteboards. Um, one of them here is called Whiteboard 5. It's from breakout room number 2. And they had to um, look in their book at a scenario in the textbook about its teaching, how they were proceeding with the lesson. And they had to talk about what they thought was a positive and what they thought could be improved upon based on what they'd learned from my lecture and from the textbook. So this group decided to make a T-chart with glows and grows, and they put all of the things they really liked about the lesson on the left and the ones they thought would be improved on the right. Now, how did this happen? This actually happened in breakout groups. Because I can. this is the main room, but I can also put them in breakouts. And I've just changed the attendee pods. When you put people into the breakout rooms, they can work with their own white and do collaborative activities. And I can go from room to room and answer questions. And they can't hear each other. They come back to the main room, and they give a report back to the whole class on what they did together. Well, that takes a lot of time. So you can imagine that we have that time now. I'm not teaching them. I've already taught them. I did my. I did my lecture. They've read the book. This is all collaborative time. So the entire these kinds of activities that are time consuming but do involve critical critical thinking and interaction, as we mentioned earlier. Um, the other thing I can do is uh, I showed them some videos. I have a little video pod here. I can show them uh, videos. I showed them a couple of videos of teachers that they could critique and talk about what they thought about. Uh, how they felt when they watched those lessons, how they would feel as 
that's another activity and we did that one collaboratively um, over on this whiteboard to the right I just moved it to call, call your attention to it oh by the way this is the sign in I always have them sign in and when they sign in oh I see what you mean by Jeffrey that's one of my students this is actually my chat from my class last week that's who Jeffrey is he's one of my students okay um, sign in with idea you got from chapter 3 so they all have whiteboard rights and you see how I'm connecting class to the textbook one new idea you got from chapter 3 so they can read what new ideas they each got from chapter 3 all right. is, and then we do other activities. This is the percent is, that they understood. I did a fake you. lesson there in it is. Do you see French it? to show them bad teaching and then Use good the teaching. I did it two different the ways. And on they the had left. to talk about how they felt sure, the two different not? times. This is collaborative on, whiteboards the in the main. Anyone who touches that, you're touching it for side. everybody, by the way. So let, let me be in control here. Okay. So. Um, then I asked them after seeing it no, twice, what did I do differently too. for the better On lesson? The but the point there. for us, for flipped learning, is to show you that uh, I do collaborative activities that provide interaction for my students, both in the full class setting as in the whiteboard I'm showing you now, and in the breakouts as in the other whiteboard. Um, and uh, we also do uh, other uh, types of activities. There's a reflections page at the end where I ask them to reflect on what they learned that night. And they can read what other people are taking away and what they took away and what others took away. So that's another activity that we do. Everything is collaborative. Here's another one where we do a fun guessing game where uh, where um, we do a description of someone with no name and the idea is to put the name on it and decorate it and it's just a bonding activity that I do. Okay, that's it. I just wanted to show you what it looks like where I teach. Okay, so thank you for sharing that with today's group. And then I'm not sure it's necessary for me to show you. The last thing I was going to show you is pretty ordinary. Um, it's simplest blackboard. I can just leave it showing the main page. I don't really have to show you the classroom. I mean, I don't have to show you the Blackboard site. You're looking here at the front page of Blackboard, and I can just call your attention um, to some of the key items that I use um, because it's Blackboard, because it's a flipped learning class. So if you look on the left side, I'm not sure how big this is, whether you can see it, but let's, instead of sharing the screen anymore, let's just look at this screenshot of Blackboard. And if you look on the left side, I'm looking for a pointer. I wish I had, if there were a pointer, I would grab it. I'm not seeing one, but uh, if there were a pointer, I'm looking for you to look at the left column. I personally like Is that something I can use? I can spend my time study as much as I want, and Flip Classroom makes my study livelier. Rereading textbook alone can be bored sometimes. As English learner, I have some difficulties catching. Seems something to be class. your pointer. I me a lot. However, I still like to go uh, to class and have real. It's all right. I'll just describe what I'm classes. trying to get them to look at. So, uh, if you look, it starts with home page. But keep the looking. The one thing. I want you to see are the things that with are flip learning. So you'll see what it says, lecture videos under discussions. Those are the videos. So if when you click on that page, you would actually see my key questions from the video and the link to the video. Then the next one is the lecture uh, and class PowerPoints. So that's where I put a PowerPoint that was used to create the video and any PowerPoints from class. Sometimes we have PowerPoints class for various reasons. And the next under that are the recordings of the Adobe class session. So I record class. So not only do I record the videos, but I record the class. So that way, if anyone's absent or comes late or leaves early, 
they can also uh, see the class. And then the whiteboard pages, all those, all those uh, whiteboards that I showed you, they all get connect. I always get a Snagit view of them and save it and put it up in Blackboard so they can see all the sign-in pages, reflection pages, their brainstorming, their collaborative pages, all of that is in the whiteboard pages. And then I have Adobe Tips. I'm going to put it back to Nan, who wants to talk to you more. Now that you know what, what happens, the nuts and bolts of it, she's going to talk to you a little bit about what it's been like for her to be in this class. So I'll turn it over now. And if you do have questions about the nuts and bolts, put them in the chat, and I'll re respond to you. And also. Like well, thanks, Thank Dr. You. M. First of all, I'd like to read this quote from Nada Siri, who's one of my colleagues. She's not an adult literacy student, but she still is in need of ESL support in the class. This is what she says about the flipped classroom. I personally like this flipped classroom so far. I can spend my time study as much as I want, and flipped classroom makes my study livelier. Rereading textbook alone can be bored sometime. As English learner, I have some difficulties catching something in class. Classroom helps me a lot. However, I still like to go to class and have real conversation with Dr. M classmates. Of course, Nata can go to the virtual classroom and ask a question. She can have real conversations with classmates and Dr. M, but they are more like FaceTime than face-to-face. Another one of my classmates recently commented, live time is student time to ask questions and ask for clarification because we watch the lecture and we're ready to engage. And now I'd like to give you my reasons for liking flipped learning. I was working on it at the beach this weekend. And I felt that I wasn't First of all, I have to admit I didn't like online learning until I met flipped learning. And I didn't like being dependent solely on the instructor to deliver material to the class. I need more time with material than some students, and I like to take my time processing information. So with flipped learning, I have the chance to watch a video more than once. I can watch it with a friend. I can pause and replay. And I can go back to it during the semester if I want to. None of that is possible in a traditional classroom where the instructor is presenting a lecture one time in class. And if you step out to the restroom, you've just missed that segment. It's over. We just saw some of the examples um, when we were in the classroom. So there's a lot of collaboration that's going on. And not only could you just see that, but we as students have access to all of that information as long as we have our laptops with us. So whenever I want, wherever I go, I can access um, student conversations, collaborative material, the lectures. I can go back and look at a chapter test that I took online. And also, it's not like we're just doing homework for the teacher the way we are in a traditional classroom. We're putting work into a platform where we all have access to it, we all benefit from it, and it's student to student instead of just being student to teacher. It's also about our relationships, because we're developing working relationships with colleagues instead of the focus being the students versus the teacher. Third, there is a tremendous convenience in being able to access all of this work, all of our collaborative work that the, that the instructor is making available to us online. So class, Dr. M is putting on the whiteboard pages and in those different segments that you saw in the left-hand column, she's putting that up on the board for us after class so that we have access to it. Um, she puts the class session recordings, her PowerPoints, tests, um, lectures, everything is available there. In my view, it's much more robust than any other ed educational experience I've had, and I like the fact that it's portable. I can, you know, I was working on it at the beach this weekend, and I felt that I wasn't missing anything. I could stay in contact. And now I hope you're ready to learn more. I'm going to turn it over to Dr. M. Dr. M. It's a wonderful community. There are maybe a hundred groups. Okay. Thank you, Nan. 
I really appreciate you again your and uh, I think it's important that we as instructs always ask uh, three questions about any new method that comes along or any new approach that comes along. We want to talk about what what might appeal to teachers about it, what might appeal to learners about it, and is it consistent with what we know about learning theory? And I have asked asked those three questions about flipped learning and it's come through with flying colors for me. I think it's wonderful for teachers, I think it's wonderful for learners, and I think it really is consistent with how people do learn. Uh, I also want to add just that side note about English language learners. I think they ben benefit more than just about anyone from the flipped approach. I see their potential. Now, if you want to learn more about flipped learning, oh, that went by a little fast, um, there are four ways you can do so. Just like everyone likes to learn differently, there are videos about the flip, there's a Ning you can join, there's a web page that lists everything under the sun that's ever been, and if you want to sit down and read a book, there are a couple books you can read. So I'm going to show you each. Now, again, I thought these were clickable, they're not. I'm not going to go through the whole thing with sharing, I'm not going to do that. But these are... Uh, so or these are several different links I'm showing you. This is Katie Gimbar's videos. She's wonderful. And I have made a bit.ly for you. I created this for you. It's a bit.ly link. So uh, maybe someone wants to put it in the chat. You can type it without too much trouble because I created it as a bit.ly. So it's Gimbar Flip, very simple. And it's all her very short videos that talk about all the questions that you're going to have about flipped learning. And it's just a wonderful collection of videos, short videos. Is anybody doing it? Because then I will do it if nobody else is doing it. Okay. I'll do it myself. All right. Gimbar flip. All right. There it is because I have to go to the next page. Okay. So then at the next idea I have is to join the Ning. And this is our Ning for flipped learning, the flipped learning network. It's a wonderful community. There are maybe a hundred groups in the community depending on what you, what subject you teach, what level students you teach. And you can join the discussions. You can join um, any of the discussion groups. There's one for English learners. There's one for one for brand new flippers. There's one for college flippers. Uh, there are all kinds of discussion groups, and um, it also this also the Flip Learning Network sponsors webinars. They sponsor meetings. They sponsor uh, all kinds of events, both in person and online. And um, I invite you to join the Ning. It's all free, of course. Uh, as another way to interact with others and learn more about the flip. The next way to learn is to go to Dan Spencer's page. He's the one. He's the guy. So he has everything and he keeps adding to it. So if you're looking for anything about uh, flip learning, you go to his Google. It's a Google Doc. You go to his Google Doc and it has everything. And again, so I, I made a bit.ly for you just for that purpose. Okay, This is the place to find all the materials uh, on flip learning and it's wonderful. And then some of you might want to just sit down and read a book. So here are two books. Uh, the first one is uh, Reach Every Student in Every Class Every Day. That's been out for a while. Thank it takes you. about an hour Thank and a half so to read much, it. And, ladies. Uh, that was awesome. Just the basics you could of just flip learning and mastery learning, which we didn't talk about. Um, today. The new one coming out is 2.0. It's not out yet, but it's coming out. It says 2018, Somebody but I think it hasn't about quite made it out on the shelves yet, but it will. Flipping 2.0, and that one is a chapter on various different uh, uh, iterations of the you flip. You have to and they're try both, they it both, to really uh, They're both going to the, be readily available. You it. can search for them. I was going to um, ask you uh, the a first, question. The first one is How published by ASCD. Which uh, you, you can go to their website. Than, um, um, teacher, the ASCD is an organization. Videos. You know, instead of having curriculum teachers do the videos, why not have students they put out a lot. do the videos and flip it and that way? And not to be too commercial about students things, but you can. Students. Okay, well, we're not there yet. Okay, you can also study research uh, on the flip if you're interested in studying. This is plain research, but if you want to look at the research on this. You know, you're not so sure and you want to read the research. There is a review of flip learning out from Pearson this year. 
uh, that takes into account all the research. There's not a lot, I can tell you that right now. So if you're interested in doing research on flipped learning, it's a fertile area and you should you should become a part of the group that's interested in researching it. I know I am. And then uh, if you want to look at flipped learning in TESOL, I do have a short a TESOL infection newsletter that came out on August 20, 2013. And in my new book, uh, I think um, Nellie mentioned earlier, it's Making the Transition to Classroom Success. Uh, in that book, I have chapter on flipped learning, flipped classrooms. So that's another thing that you can do, um, another way that you can learn. And this slide is supposed to rotate okay. when I click on it, thank but it's supposed you. to go upside down. For, uh, so that's the end so of my presentation with Nan Friedland. Was really, so really we clear. both thank you very I much. There that, we go. Uh, try it. How about that? How did that happen? <laughs> yeah, because it uh, it's a lot of fun for teachers. Yay. That's why I keep thinking okay. about students. It's Yay. so much fun for okay. us. So don't um, I don't know how much time we have. I too. tried to keep it to one hour. Uh, we've really enjoyed talking with you. And I guess depending on what uh, we could answer a few questions. Oh, that was me. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I do see the flipped learning as a type of blended learning. You know, as Nan was saying earlier, it's the perfect blend. It is blended learning because in blended learning you have online components and face-to-face -face components. Except our face-to-face -face is in a virtual classroom, so that's the, the the way I view it. I view it as I'm instead of teaching a pure online class, I'm really teaching a blended class. So you're, you're talking about blended online learning? It's fully online? But sometimes... Yeah, because I still see it blended because we, we are meeting every week. They have to be in class. Okay, physically. Well, actually, uh, Nan, do you want to talk about... That's for sure. Uh, All right. So thank you. About thank you uh, so were you much, in the linguistics that year? We'll what what in linguistics at the end? Their book. final project was to do uh, a Lando, video nice. similar to mine. They each were choosing a that they had studied during the semester, and for their presentation, they could make a video. And uh, several of them did that. They went in and made their own video, teaching the class about the differences between. Uh, Greek and English and what might be hard for a Greek speaker, etc. And they made the recording just like I did with the webcam and all. And then we all went to, it was a face-to-face -face class, so we actually went to class and we all sat around and watched the video. And then it, when it was over, we asked the student questions. So I have had students make videos, absolutely. That's, it's a wonderful, um, another possibility that is opened up have some students make videos for the rest of the class. Thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, I haven't done that at this point. I've made the group heterogeneous. Other questions? Okay. Well, thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. And uh, we'll see you on the 18th our next class. So join us too, hello, if you have time. Bye for now. I just noticed that there was a question was in the chat. How is flipped way, learning different be, from blended um, with a flip to, to it? To I do YouTube see the flipped learning as a, names, as a type of blended so that, learning. Um, you know, as Nan was saying the, earlier, it's the perfect blend. It is blended learning because you. in blended learning you have online components and face-to-face -face components, except our face-to-face -face is in a virtual classroom. So that's the, the, uh, the way I view it. I view it as I'm, instead of